Hello. Hi guys. Ouch. Hello to my fellow aspiring nurses. My name is Joel and welcome to my vlog. So for today's video, I want to share some practical tips and advice for my aspiring UK RNs. Ito yung mga bagay na mga na-realize ko nung nag apply pa lang ako dito sa UK at yung mga bagay na natutunan ko along the way nung nandito na ako sa UK. So gusto ko lang i-share yun sa inyo para naman kahit pa paano, hindi na kayo masyadong mahirapan mag-adjust Kasi alam ko na medyo challenging talaga na mag-apply dito sa UK. Alam niyo yun, yung mga struggle, setbacks, failures. Ah, napagdaanan ko yan lahat, guys. So, minsan, nati-discourage tayo sa mga struggles natin sa buhay. Kaya naman, nandito ako para i-cheer kayo. Laban lang! So, before anything else, please subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell down below so that you won't miss any nursing vlog and all also, add me on Instagram. So, there you go. Let's get right into the video. Alright, so practical tip number one. NMC has amended specific requirements for you to qualify as a nurse in the UK. Mga latest updates lang to na nalaman ko recently at nagulat talaga ako ha. Kasi, number one, you don't have to be a board passer for you to qualify as a nurse here. And number two, you don't need experience. How is that? Grabe, dati. Nagkukumahog kami sa pag-apply sa hospital. Makakuha lang ng experience kahit volunteer lang, kahit walang sahod. Ngayon, okay na kahit walang experience. Pero guys, listen to me. Makinig kayong mabuti. I would strongly advise that you take the board exam. Pass the board exam, gain experience bago kayo mag-apply dito sa UK. Bakit? Number one, I don't know the process will be, pero nabilitaan ko sa iba that it would be a very difficult process for you. Number two, the competition is so tough. Tough. Ang dami kayang nurses dyan sa Pilipinas, almost mga 100,000. So, the competition will be tough. At kung wala kang experience, hindi ka pa board passer, it will be very difficult for you. And guys, masarap naman sa paharamdam na nurse ka sa iyong mismong bansa, ba? Ang hirap kayo ng board exam sa Pilipinas. Alam mo yun, parang hindi ako matatawag na isang tunay na nurse kung hindi ako board passer. Yung board exam, yun yung proof mo eh. Doon sa 4 years, nagsunog ka ng key para lang maipasa ang board exam. It's good to maintain that way that Philippines is producing high quality nurses. Okay, dito sa UK, it's not needed whether you have hospital or non-hospital experience. Whether it's clinic or community or company, it doesn't matter. As long as it's a nursing experience, you can qualify. But I would suggest you go for a hospital experience. Why? It is because hospital ang babaks sa kanya dito. Yung mga theories and foundations na natutunan nyo no nag aaral kayo as a nurse, ibang-iba siya compared sa real hospital setup. Hindi lang naman nursing skills yung mahohone sa inyo, kundi tatalas din ng inyong emotional maturity. Pakikisama sa mga katrabaho nyo. Yung tibay at lakas ng loob. How you handle stress sa work. Multitasking. People skills. You know what I'm saying? Really Resistensya nyo sa trabaho. Resistensya ba yun? Hindi pala. Resilience. Yung mga ninja moves na matututunan nyo. Joke lang. Hindi ninja moves. Techniques, okay? Yung mga techniques that you will learn. Oh, and many much more. The best things in life is learned through experience. And I'm telling you guys, you will be thankful and grateful dun sa mga experience na naranasan nyo, yung mga paghihirap at pasakit sa hospital, na malapit nyo ng isumpa, yung mga ganun ba? It's the real world that I'm talking about here. Aray ko, nangangalay na akong sakit na ng aking binti. Dito may hostesya ang pasyente. So, pag nademanda kayo, 
eh, ewan ko na lang, adi balik na lang kayo sa inyong bansa. Pick a JCI accredited hospital. Kasi hindi na katulad dati na nag-volunteer mga nurses sa hospital. Pinag-aagawa ng kayo ng mga hospital. So, choose wisely. Ideal yung setup nila doon. And hindi na kayo mahihirap pa makapag-adjust pag nandito na kayo sa ibang bansa. Ibang-iba pa rin compared sa UK standard. Pero, you won't find it hard anymore to adjust because of the ideal setting that they have in a JCI accredited hospitals. Basta guys, huwag kayong magmadali, pass the board exam, gain considerable amount of experience, preferably mga one year, then Gora Bells na kayo. May kasabihan nga kapag nagmamadali, natitisod. Okay! So, napasa nyo na yung board exam, nakapag-gain na kayo na experience, what's next? English exam. Five minutes ago, nalaman ko lang that you can use your OET to apply for UK visas and immigration. Before, even though you pass the OET, you still have to take IELTS UK VI because that is the requirement for applying for UK visas and immigration. So, napakaswerte lang ng mga nurses ngayon because you can just choose either IELTS UK VI or OET to qualify for NMC registration and for UK visas and immigration. Siguro one thing that I would advise here, kung ano man sa dalawa yung piliin nyo, either OET or IELTS exam, preparation is the key. So mag-set kayo ng realistic timeline kung ilang weeks nyo pa pag-aaralan yung listening, reading, speaking, and writing. Doon kayo mag-focus sa areas that you are weak at. Ako, ang nangyari sa akin, baliktad. Ang dami kong preparation sa listening, speaking, reading, pero pinabayaan ko yung writing ko. Natatandaan ko nung dati, nakadalawang practice lang ako ng writing nun. Isang timed, isang untimed. Tapos feeling ko, okay na yon. So, samp lang ako sa writing. <laughs> Siyempre, hindi nga nag-prepare eh. Ang idea lang na meron ako sa OAT is that it's a healthcare-based English test, while the IELTS is more on university-based. But OAT is twice the price of the IELTS exam. Sa akin kasi, biggest hurdle ko talaga yung English exam na yan eh. But, I see certain people that they're making it as their end goal. Lalo na yung mga nasa review center, medyo nalilihi sila ng goal nila. And the ultimate goal is to be a UKRN, not to be an English professor, IELTS professor, OET professor. You can never be super ready or super perfect. Just enough preparation. Nung nakapasa ko sa IELTS, I wasn't super ready during that time. I just prayed to God a specific topic that I am confident to answer. And then, yun yung lumabas. So, I think it's just a matter of belief in yourself and belief in God that it will be given to you. Basta nakita lang ni Lord na nagtsaga ka, na nagsunog ka ng kilay, para sa exam na yan. And remember, IELTS or OET are just stepping stones for your ultimate goal, which is to be a UKRN. So, napasa nyo na ang IELTS or OET. Congratulations! CBT naman yung itatake yung exam. Ano ang advice ko dito? So, before you take CBT exam, mamimili na kayo ng agency na pupuntahan nyo. I would suggest that you choose the hospital, not the agency alone. Why? Because different hospital, different benefits. Like for example, other hospitals or other trusts offer a three-month free accommodation. Yung iba, one month lang. Yung iba, they're offering free OSCE exam fee, but the others, you have to pay it staggered payment. As for me, I chose my own hospital or trust. Hinanap ko lang kung anong agency ang associated with that hospital that I am eyeing for. Because of the benefits and I like the fact that it's a prestigious hospital, I think all trusts are offering reimbursement of exam fees, visas, plane ticket. So, lahat yung sagot ng trust. Nagkakaiba lang kapag sa mga accommodation, allowance, and ayun nga kung sasagutin ba nila yung OSCE nyo or you have to pay it. And you can compare the benefits of each hospital and kung ano yung napupusuan nyo, dun kayo. Kung gusto nyo na city life, go to Central London. If you want a university vibe, go to either Oxford or Cambridge 
Cambridge. And if you want a low cost of living, you go to the far north. Kasi doon mura yung mga accommodation, doon mura yung bahay. So kung pang pamilyang gusto nyo, go to far north. Yung mga Manchester, Liverpool, Stockton, or sa Northern Ireland. Or you can go to Wales, mura din ang cost of living doon. Mas maganda kung may English exam na kayo and IELTS or OET passer na kayo before you apply to a specific agency. Kasi mas may edge kayo. Okay, now you'll take CBT. The CBT or computer-based test, ang laman ng exam na yun are mostly NMC code of conduct. Yung mga standards nila or healthcare standards nila dito sa UK. Para sa akin, kaya siyang ipasa within one month or two months review. So the agency that you are into will provide the necessary reviewers for you to pass the CBT exam. And that would be enough. Basta basahin nyo lang yung NMC Code of Conduct and I think mapapasa nyo yung CBT. CBT has 120 items of multiple choice questions and you can take it for 4 hours. So during my time, I took it for 3.5 hours. Wala akong pakialam nung time na yon kahit nag-iisa na lang ako at kahit nakatayo na yung guardiya sa labas at hinihintay ako. Basta sabi ko, hindi na ako babaler. At hindi na nga ako bumalik kasi nakapasa ako nung time na yon So, kapag inupuan niyo yung CBT na yan, you say to yourself, hindi na kayo babalik. Imamaximize yung oras na ibinigay sa inyo for that 120 items. Kasi, aksaya nga naman sa oras na pabalik-balik kayo kapag mag-second take pa kayo, isa eh, Makati pa yon So, ba hindi nyo afford make the most of it. Make the most of the CBT exam. Huwag kayong magmadali. I take advantage yung 4 hours na binigay sa inyo for that 120 items. Ah, pagod na ako. Oh. So, let's go for the life advice. Okay, number one. Be patient. My fellow nurses, everything takes time and everything has its own season. Things really don't happen on our own timetable. But know that God's timing is all always the perfect timing. Always remember that your waiting season is not a wasted season for you to be prepared for what God has in store for you. The real battle is here in the UK, guys. Hindi lang puro saya dito. And also, do not compare yourself to others. I'm also preaching this to myself. I know madali lang sabihin, pero mahirap gawin. Every time that you feel sad that others are making their way to UK and you face just lift your head up and tell to yourself, Jewel, you can do this. If they can do it, so can you. It's not just my time yet, but I will surely get there. Then, smile. And life advice number three, nasabi ko na to before dun sa vlog ko about my experience on my UKRN journey. Don't give up up. It doesn't matter how slowly you go as long as you keep going. That is according to Confucius. And soon you'll eventually get there. And you have to always realize that you're not the only person who has been in those type of struggles. We've been there. I've been there. And if it comes too easy for you, you will never appreciate it. You will never cherish it. So, hayun lang naman mga fellow nurses. So, I hope na kahit paano na encourage kayo. And my bonus ako dito, I've also asked my friends who are nurses here in the UK to give some life tips and advice para naman hindi biased, no? Hindi lang naman galing sa akin. So, heto, mabasahin ko. Okay, let's read their advice. Galing kay Fern Fileo. Hmm, siguro yung sa akin, ALS was the biggest challenge for me. I took it three times. Haha. <laughs> Anyways, the road may be bumpy, but keep your eyes set on your goals. Eliminate what keeps you from progressing and don't give up. Trying your mistakes will help you improve above all else. Set your eyes on God who is your promise keeper and will guide you through it. Aw, di ba? Ganda. Thanks, Fern! Ito, galing to kay Lefrance Catholico. Be resilient! Take control! This is your season! This is your year! The world isn't stopping and so are you! Nahox na one So inspiring! Thanks, France! Jaira Jumaira. Tama ba yung pronunciation ko na last name mo, Jaira? Ang struggles niya, living independently, preparing your meal every day and doing all the chores. Adulting is hard. When life is so tough and we can't keep up with all the stuff going on with our lives, we wanted to go back to our comfort zone 
and that is our home where our parents are we are all in a hurry to grow up and we forget that our parents are getting old Nox, na po family oriented naman itong si Jaira. Pero guys, oo, tama yon. Kasi ako, nakalimutan ko to live in the present moment nung mga panahon na nag-apply ako sa UK. Parang puro focus ko UK nun eh. And minsan take for granted natin yung mga bagay na laging nandiyan At nung nasa UK na ako, namimiss ko na sila, yung family ko. At dalawang taon na akong di nakaka-uwi, gawa ng COVID. So, guys, habang nandiyan kayo sa Pilipinas, save or the moment, enjoy the moment with your family and friends kasi hindi sila laging nandiyan pag nasa UK kayo, you're on your own, you're independent you are out of your comfort zone okay? Okay, kay Leo Ant, failure is not the end but a stepping stone like sa IELTS or kung ano pang exams every challenge is a molding of character and realignment of purpose oh, di ba? Lalim Thanks Leo! Mga church friends ko to eh, so alam mo yun medyo deep kanya lang mga message Okay, Florence Marie Uy, planning your step is the key but also take each day as it comes Celebrate the little wins and view failures as motivation. Always remember to take care of your health, enough rest, and healthy foods while preparing for the exam. And don't forget spiritual need must come before anything else and everything will follow. O, oh, diba? Mga makajusto mga kaibigan ko, you know? For IELTS, practice, practice, practice. Consume information and apply. Practice speaking kahit sa bahay. Kahit na they reply back in their local dialect. O, oh, diba? Practice lang kayo sa bahay. Kausapin niyo yung mga magulang niyo, yung sisters, yung brothers niyo na English speaking, kahit English carabao, diba? Thank you, Flo! Ito kay Nolly Beliran. Si Nolly ay RN sa Northern Ireland. So, dun ko nalaman na mura ang cost of living doon. Tsaka, daming libre. So, sabi niya dito, biggest struggle ko talaga is time and money. Kasi sobrang demanding ng trabaho as nurse sa Pinas with so little compensation. Pero, sinandalan ko si God. Dasal ako ng dasal na pasasalamat sa kanya as if binigay na niya sa akin mga wishes ko. At yun nga, dream come true. O, oh, di ba? Thank you, Nolly. <laughs> Ito, ang dami ko palang hininga ng advice. Ito, galing kay Erickson Sapungan. Alright, I think the worst struggle I had was almost giving up my UK dream. At first, I thought the process would be just smooth, but I had problems with time, money, and with myself. I doubted myself a lot and had a very low self-esteem during my application. Actually, I set it aside for a while and tried my luck in other countries like SG or in Qatar, but they didn't call me back. Because of that, I refocused on my ultimate dream, my UK dream. Luckily, I got my study leave approved and was able to prepare for my English exam and passed it while working in the ICU in the Philippines. I did comply with all other exams and requirements and finally resigned from my job when I received my COS and really prayed so hard and God heard me well. Aww, Ethan, thank you! Ganda ng message mo. Lahat ng message maganda. Salamat guys. Salamat sa inyo. And last but not the least, galing to kay Arabuni Kanyada Dash Mahia. Para ako ang announcer ng basketball. Ara, congratulations on your baby on the way. Advice would be to chase not necessarily the dreams that you have in your heart, but the purpose of God in you. There is always a greener pasture somewhere, but if while in there you lost yourself, your purpose, it's all for nothing. Give your 100% in what you do. Trust that God is with you. And for times that your will is against His, there's always something better coming. The goal is to know God better for you to know yourself better in all seasons of your life. Whether in the Philippines, in the UK, in Canada, or in the US, as long as God is with you, you're going to be okay. Aww, Ara, thank you very much for your God-centered message. Ganda. Nice, nice naman. Thank you so much, guys, for your advices. 
So, ayun guys, yun lang naman ang mga message namin para sa inyo. Alam ko guys na kayang-kaya nyo yan. As long as you keep on believing in yourself that you have what it takes to be a UKRN and as long as you never lose hope, you'll surely get there. Alright, so thank you so much for listening and thank you so much for watching my vlog. See you next time. More vlogs to come. So please like and subscribe to my channel and also hit the notification bell down below. Don't forget. Bye! future UKRN